In this video, we're taking a look at the data model of the Power BI Profit and Loss Template from Accounting Insights. The purpose of this video is to help you decide the relevance of this to your business. We'll take a look at the Power BI model and we'll also take a look at the data set that we import from Excel. At the heart of the data model is our fact table, our transactions table, that is effectively our actuals with the budget and the, and the forecast appended to, to provide one single fact table, which makes the model very easy to use and very performant. We have a partners table, which is an append of our customers and suppliers into a single table. We have our dates table, which is a normal Power BI calendar table generated in Power Query and driven off the company year end month so that it reflects the fiscal year of the company. And we have our accounts table that is an import from Excel, which is a three level chart of accounts defining the main groupings, categories, and then down to the individual account level. Now, if we take a look at our report, the main feature really of the report is this matrix. And one of the first things you'll notice is that the rows on this matrix correspond closely, but not exactly to a natural three level hierarchy of our chart of accounts. First, actually, we've only got two levels displayed in the report, but more importantly, we've got irregular summaries like the gross profit and the EBITDA. We've also got blank lines. So we've got a, a custom presentation going on here against a very standard three level hierarchical chart of accounts. So we need two extra things in our report. We need a table to define this presentation and then another table to define the mapping between this presentation and our natural three level hierarchy of our chart of accounts. And that's what we've done within the model here. So we've got a table defining the presentation of our profit and loss, which we call chart PL. And that's created in Power Query just sim simply using the enter data function. And then we've got this bridging table to, to handle the mapping between the presentation of our, chart, of our profit and loss and our hierarchical chart of accounts. And this mapping table, again, makes it very easy to then write the DAX code for our profit and loss and also makes the, the model very performant. If you go back to our report, we can see that as we select different dates, we've got a, a dynamic x-axis for dates here. And we facilitate that in the model using two dates tables. So we've got the main dates table driving the filters of our transactions. But then we've got a secondary dates table driving our slices um, to capture the intent of what it, what it is that we want to see. And then we use the interaction or, or combination of those two things to actually drive the behavior within the report. This inactive relationship here is purely to stop the date slices table from generating its own date hierarchy, which, which we don't want. Now also within the report, we see that we've got a number of disconnected switch tables, I call them. And they're basically these to drive the slices, to select the analysis period, the comparison, the aggregation, calculation, and so on. We have a number of measures tables, just to hold our measures and keep the report nice and neat. And we've got two additional tables. We've got a chart date filters table, which drives this table here at the top right hand corner, which is just for display purposes to feed back to the user what it is that the user has selected in terms of uh, the date ranges within the report. And then finally, we have this PL matrix columns table, which as the name implies, is the table that drives the columns of the profit and loss matrix. And the idea of having the separate table is that we can have a dynamic column here saying budget, 
if I switch the comparison to previous year, then the column within the matrix table changes to previous year. So that's effectively the Power BI model. And let's take a quick look at the source data. We've got our transactions table that is coming in. This is fairly standard. It's very similar to a journals extract you get from most accounting software. There are two differences. One is just for convenience within the, the demo, I've switched the sign of the amount column uh, usually, if you export a journal table from accounting software, sales will come through as negative and costs will come through as positive. And in this Excel table, I've just switched the sign just to make it easier when we bring it into Power BI. Um, and also to make sure that the demo is always current, I'm driving the date off a relative day column. Now, in your real model, you'll switch the relative day to date and you'll map that to the date column in your date table. Those are the only differences, really. Our chart of accounts is a regular three-level chart of accounts. We've got the main grouping, category, and account. Then we've got group ID and category ID for sort orders. We've got a column to define whether or not it's profit and loss and balance sheet. And we've got another column to uh, identify whether or not we're switching the signs for presentation purposes, uh, particularly with costs, because most people like present costs as positive numbers in a profit and loss statement and it's this column that drives that behavior. We have a company table from which we're picking up the year end months to drive our dates table. We've got a regular supplier list and customer list and then finally the uh, perhaps slightly unusual thing about the report is that I've allowed you to define your budgets and forecasts on three levels and those levels operate independently. So we can define budgets at group level, at category level, and at account level. And the reason why we do it on the, th on the three different levels, A, is to make it easier to maintain because, and, and well, actually just to make it easier to maintain because if you think about it, you may want to define a budget for staff costs, but you may not want to define a budget for all the GL codes that make up the staff costs. You're just interested in, in the total. And this kind of three-level hierarchy for the, the budgets and the forecasts makes it easy to maintain that. So that's a very quick tour of the data model underneath the Power, Power BI Profit and Loss template. And I hope it helps you decide its relevance to your business.